Hello, everybody. This is the Catholic Esquire. I wanted to come to you today because, yet again, another document's been released by the Vatican that's causing all kinds of questions, controversies, chaos, because that's what these people do. Um, it's this new document issued by the Dicastery for Christian Unity, and it is entitled The Bishop of Rome. And I will put a link to the document in the description to this video so you can read the whole thing. It's really long. And it basically goes through and talks about and summarizes years worth of ecumenical dialogue with Protestants and Ortho Eastern Orthodox uh, in, in an effort to find a way to um, be in union together with the Catholic Church. Now, for normal, right-thinking Catholics, when we hear about these things, there should only be one response that should initially come to mind. Well, if there's going to be union together with Protestants and Eastern Orthodox and whatever, then what needs to happen is, is those people need to convert to become Catholic. And then we will have unity because the Church of Christ is the Catholic Church. That's what the Church has always taught. Uh, is recently up through Pope Pius the Twelfth, but well before that, that's what was always the understanding of the Church. My last video, when I talked about the errors of Vatican II, and I ex talked about ecumen uh, ecumenism, ecumenism, uh, ecu uh, and, and and I talked about this, and I said that's what the Church has always been. Second Vatican Council and Lumen Gentium changed that. Remember, uh, the Church of Christ is no longer the Catholic Church. Now, the Church of Christ subsists in the Catholic Church. And I explained to you what a big deal that was. This is more bad fruit of the Second Vatican Council. This is exactly what we're talking about here. We have a bunch of people in the Vatican spending years and years and documents and ink, ink, ink all over the place trying to figure out a way to have unity with Protestants who reject, you know, the papacy. So rather than working on ways to bring them into the church and get their conversion, what the people in the Vatican are doing, and they figured out in their brains, is that, oh, hey, what if we just change the papacy? Because the papacy is such a big obstacle to communion what if we just change the papacy around a little bit in order to make it more pleasing to them, in which case then we can say we've bridged a gap. We have now more unity because we are all in agreement on what the Petrine ministry really is and should be and how it should be exercised. That's the purpose of this Bishop of Rome document. And what they're telling you is actually nothing new. The modernists have been talking about this for years, uh, that they think there should be ways that we can change the papacy, especially the way it's exercised, in order to appease the Protestants, appease the Lutherans, appease the Anglicans and the Eastern Orthodox, to get past some of those hurdles. Uh, for those of you who have also been paying attention to this channel, I've done several videos on why I said Benedict the 16th never resigned the office of the papacy. What he did was resign the active uh, component of the overall Petrine ministry, which is more of a new modernist concept, uh, and then retained or remained in a way as a passive player, which opened the door for a conclave, which was never a real conclave, to elect Francis who is, cannot possibly be the real pope because Benedict never completely resigned the papacy. I bring all of that up because those of us who understand what was wrong with Benedict's resignation also understand that what he was doing was very consistent with what the modernists have been teaching about the need to change the office of the, Pen the Petrine ministry to change it in the way it's exercised. Now, the talks and the discussions with the modernists since the 1970s, especially Karl Rahner, but yes, Ratzinger, before he was Pope, uh, they even wrote a book together on this, uh, the, the talks have always been about changing the nature of how the papal office is, is exercised, 
uh, to be more ecumenical, to appease the Protestants. So this is no surprise to us. And this is it may be a surprise to other people uh, you know, who aren't interested in really digging into why Benedict didn't resign. They just accept what they're told without questioning anything that they get from Catholic answers or other mainstream norming Catholic media. Uh, you know, they don't really do the deep dive. And so they probably haven't really heard some of these arguments. Uh, but this is the Archbishop Miller dissertation. This is uh, all part of this. And it was certainly something Benedict signed on to. So this is more of the uh, the ultimate consequences of what we're seeing here. Uh, the errors of Vatican II we, we see come to fruition. Uh, you're going to see them reiterate uh, another error, uh, collegiality, that was in the Second Vatican Council II. Uh, that's actually going to be the next part in my series on the errors of Vatican II is on the error of collegiality. So I will do a uh, document just like I did the other errors, and then I'll do a video as well to give you more details on that. Basically, what Vatican II said is that the power of the bishops, they get their jurisdictional power from God himself rather than the Pope. That's wrong. That's heretical. That's an error. That's in the documents of Vatican II. But the modernists use that to show how bishops outside of the papacy itself still have authority and jurisdiction directly from God, as opposed to getting their authority through the Pope, which is an ecumenical obstacle to Protestants. That's what all of this document is about. The entire document is garbage. It's not Catholic. It's actually very, very dangerous. Um, it's very dangerous because the ideas that are expressed in there, and they are all just different ideas. It's true. That's the summary of the document is just a bunch of people's ideas. Uh, but all of these ideas are very, very bad. And none of them are Catholic. And it's very, very um, scary for people who who actually care about the church and want to preserve its fundamental nature, which always has its root in the vicar of Christ. Uh, they don't even like to use the term anymore. They like to use Bishop of Rome. But um, yes, at, at the end of the day, what's happening here, just so you understand, and you may not feel like reading that huge document, the point of what's happening here is they're trying to find a way and justify using the Second Vatican Council, a failed council, uh, to change essentially the nature of the papacy. Not necessarily get rid of it, but they want to change it in the way it's exercised. And, you know, whether that's having uh, more synodality, maybe a, 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 synod, synod, a, a, synod, a synod that participates in the Petrine ministry, you know, having more than one person, perhaps even more bishops, uh, even lay people. Um, or maybe having two people that exercise and expand a Petrine ministry. Uh, I'm just throwing out ideas here, but the point is, is that they're looking to change the way the, they call it the Petrine ministry is, is exercised. That's the whole purpose of the document. And it's, it's not Catholic, it's extremely dangerous. Um, but it also gives some, lends some support to what those of us who knew Benedict never resigned properly or completely have been saying now for years. This is this is all part of the modernist program. It's very consistent with it. And it's all rooted and grounded in the errors of the Second Vatican Council. Please stay tuned. I will be ish, I will be producing some more documents on my blog, CatholicEsquire.org, and videos, particularly on this issue of collegiality which is very much connected to this document that was just released this morning by the Vatican. Uh, thank you for listening. Please share this video. No, a lot of people aren't going to be talking about this. This is very uncomfortable for people, especially those who make a living defending the Second Vatican Council. Um, but they're, they're, at some point, it's going to be impossible to start denying that what's happening due to the errors contained in the Second Vatican Council is the creation of a new church that's intended to replace and ultimately destroy the remnants of the real Catholic Church. That's the intent, anyway. It's going to be obvious at some point to these people. I don't know when, my friends. I'm just trying to make it as clear as possible so you can see, and then you just go do the research yourself. If this is useful, share this video, subscribe to the channel, keep listening. More information will be coming. Thank you. 
God bless and pray for the church.